Good morning. Jesus is Lord. Thank God the word works. So confess with me right now. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my entire family. Jesus is Lord over my day, over my entire life. And Jesus is Lord of all. I have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to me today in Jesus' name. And he writes this word on the tablets of my mind and my heart. And this word brings forth a full harvest, a hundredfold harvest in Jesus' name. So we have found that the Holy Spirit, or that the Father actually, has given us a rich inheritance. And one of the things is his very own wisdom. In 1 Corinthians 1.30, and I think I misquoted this address yesterday, but it says, he says, But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Don't wait until a situation to confess this. Yes, you can acknowledge this at times that you need to, but start out the day and during the day. Father, I thank you that of him am I in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto me wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. I quoted a couple of days ago how Jesus said that the Queen of, of the South came to listen to Solomon's wisdom. And, you know, God gave Solomon the wisdom that he had. That's what he asked for. And it said that he was known all over the known world for his wisdom. But Jesus said, a greater than Solomon is here. And he is in us. Jesus the greater than Solomon dwells on the inside of us. So take full advantage of that wisdom. We don't have to live this life trying to figure it out. And even like a lot of times in relationships, we don't have to try to figure out what's going on. No, we just thank you, Father, that you are made unto me wisdom and I know what to do. We don't even have to figure out what's wrong. All we have to do is just walk in the solution. And he gives us the solution at all times. Maybe even you don't even realize that um, as you're confessing that Christ has made unto you wisdom, that there's even something going on that you don't know about. You just, as you confess it though, you just walk in that wisdom and all of your paths are peace. So, um, and then he also said in Colossians 2, 3, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom, not only just wisdom, but in knowledge. And Jesus said in Mark chapter 4 that there's nothing hidden but what it shall be revealed. So, in you are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, but as you acknowledge that wisdom and knowledge, then these are just a part of you at all times. Yesterday, I gave you Proverbs 24, 3 and 4, and this is it in the Amplified. Through skillful and godly wisdom is a house, a home, a life, a family built, and by understanding, it is established on a sound and good foundation. And by knowledge are its chambers of every area filled with all precious and pleasant riches. And like I shared yesterday, the most valuable of the riches is the presence of the Lord himself. And he said that the whole earth would be full of his glory. So I say that my home is full of his glory. Praise God full of his peace, full of his joy. But you know, you can also take this into the natural realm. If you're building a house, take this scripture and say, through skillful and godly wisdom, do I build my house? 
My sister-in-law literally did that. She and my brother were ready to build, and he was busy with his business. He has a vet clinic in Birmingham, uh, very successful. He's very godly, he and his family. And my sister-in-law, Mimi, literally she, I think she actually was the, the contractor that subcontracted everything and oversaw everything. It's a four-story house with, um, or three stories in a basement, had an uh, elevator in it, has an elevator in it. It's just elegant, beautiful. And, but she trusts, trusts in the Lord for everything and had the wisdom of God on how to do, how to hire out, who to hire out, what to put in. And it, it is beautiful. It is amazing what she did, but her trust is in the Lord, her God. But the Lord wanted me to share this also with you in building a home, a family, a life. One of the things that uh, God has given me of his wisdom is uh, something that probably the Lord has spoken also to you. And this is not to be taken lightly, but this is the wisdom of God. Judge not that you be not judged. Condemn not and you shall not be condemned. And um, just to share with you, years ago, I um, actually, well, what happened was Frank, my husband, was, um, he made a mistake in our checkbook and in the banking. And so all of a sudden, these checks were bouncing like about 10 checks. And back then it was either 25 or $30 a check that bounced. And I got really upset about that. And, and I just thought, how could you do that? I don't know that I said that much, but I probably said more than I needed to for sure. Yes. And, but more importantly is I judged it in my heart. And do you know, it was not a week or two later that I did the same thing, only worse. And I had to go to him and I said, Please forgive me. I was wrong for judging you. I was wrong for getting upset. And I was wrong for making this mistake myself. So the Lord has um, quickened to me about judging even other ministers or judging uh, public officials. Now, you have to judge what's right and wrong but then pray for them. And that's what he says. Pray for your enemies. Bless your enemies. Pray the wisdom of God for them, that they have the wisdom of God, that they know what to do. Well, if you're praying for them to have wisdom, instead of judging them and criticizing them, then God will give them wisdom, but he will also cause that to come back to you. And how many of you would rather have the wisdom of God than to be doing some of the things that you're judging them for. And like I said, you have to judge what's right and wrong, but you don't judge to condemn, you pray for. And this one, really for parents, because there were times where I would judge other parents and think, how could they let their children do that? And um, would voice it. And then, do you know, I turned around and did the same thing. And I repented. I said, oh my, because it came right back to me, the very thing that I had judged. So the Lord told me, he said, when you see a parent that's maybe making mistakes in your eyes, just pray for them to have the wisdom of God. Ask God to give them wisdom, to show them what to do. And you know what? Then that is what will come back to you. I would rather have the wisdom of God than to have the judgment of what I've judged. So right now would be a good time for you to ask the Lord if there's anybody that you have judged, criticized, or condemned that you can repent of uh, so that you won't be judged and ask him to forgive you of each one that he brings to your attention, to your remembrance. And just repent before the Lord, humbly repent and say, Father, I was wrong. I'm asking you to forgive me for that. For, forgive me for judging 
that person for doing that. I was wrong. I believe the best for that person. I believe they have the wisdom of God. I believe they know what to do and that you guide their paths. Because the word says, as you would that men should do to you, do you so to them. So if you want people to pray for you instead of judging you, then you pray for other people. Well, we'll pick up on this tomorrow. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord. Thank God, Christ is made unto you wisdom. Confess that with me right now. Christ is made unto me wisdom at all times in Jesus' name.